All right, so what I want to do next is to try to give a better understanding for what the elements of a density matrix represent, right? We touched on this briefly when we introduced the density matrix for both pure states and mixed states, but didn't really go into too much detail. So I want to do that here. So we can start by, you know, saying, okay, we, we have, let's say we have a pure state psi. And we know that, you know, for pure states, we can always represent them as a superposition of other states in some given basis, right? So we can say, well, the state psi is equal to alpha zero, phi zero, plus alpha one, phi one, plus all the way to alpha n, phi sub n, right? Where these uh, phi sub u's, this phi sub u's, from u going from one to n, they form an orthonormal basis, right? So for example, in the case of an n qubit system, uh, this, this phi zero state will be the all zero state, right? Uh, this phi sub one will be the one state and you know, all the way down to phi sub n, that will be the all one state, right? And this will be for, for n qubits where this now capital N will be two to the N minus one and this lowercase n is the number of qubits of our system, right? So um, we can also write this a little bit more compactly in the form of, you know, the sum from U zero to capital N of alpha sub U phi sub U. So when we have a state like this, we kind of have some understanding of what this coefficients alpha sub u represent, right? So, so we know that if we were to measure the state uh, psi, well, the probability of measuring the state phi sub zero, which is the probability of measuring the all zero state, right, will be equal to the norm square of the coefficient alpha zero, right? And in general, the probability of obtaining any of this eigenstates phi sub u is equal to alpha sub u norm squared, right? So we kind of understand what these coefficients represent in terms of measurement, but we also know that we can use this coefficient alpha to create constructive and destructive interference, for example, in different quantum algorithms by changing their faces and then amplifying their values to obtain one particular state over the others with higher probability, right? So, so we can understand what these coefficients are. But what about the density matrix? So let's say we have the density matrix rho of the form rho zero zero, rho zero one, all the way to rho zero n, and you know, populate it um, all the way down to rho n n. Well, what do these coefficients say rho zero zero or uh, rho zero n, what do they represent, right? And we said that, well, when we have a pure state, this, this rho is given by the outer product of that state with itself. So, you know, we can construct the density matrix for uh, uh, this state in, let's say, the same eigenbasis. We, we express our psi up here, and right? So we can just take the product of our column vector, alpha zero, alpha one, down to alpha n, with the raw version of that, which is a row vector alpha zero complex conjugate all the way to alpha n complex conjugate, right? And that gives us a matrix of the form all the way to alpha n alpha n complex conjugate, right? So we also say, well, if we look at this diagonal elements, right, we can we can see that this diagonal terms are of the form alpha sub u, alpha sub u complex conjugate, which is equal to the norm squared of alpha sub u, right? So the diagonal elements of a density matrix 
gives a, give us the probability of obtaining one of the eigenstates when we measure the state rho, right? So, so this one will be the probability of measuring the all zero state, right? This one will be the probability of measuring the one state and this, you know, the all one state, right? And then we said, well, the off diagonal terms are what are known as the coherences. And we'll, we'll talk about these in a minute. So another important thing to keep in mind is that because our state should be normalized, well, we know that the sum of this coefficients alpha sub u norm squared should always add up to one, right? All the probabilities of measuring all possible states should add up to one. And since these elements are all throughout the density matrix diagonal, well, that means that the trace of the density matrix, right? The trace is just the sum of the diagonal elements should be equal to one. So this is an important property of, of a density matrix. So now the question is, well, how about mixed states, right? So let's remember that the definition of a density matrix for a mixed state is given by the sum uh, from i equal one to m of all the different states in our ensemble, right? Weighted by their corresponding probability of occurrence. And now one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, for, for this mixed state, this, this state's psi sub i, they don't need to be necessarily eigenstates of, of some basis, right? We had an example at some point where we had an ensemble of the state right, the state left, and the state plus, right? The state plus, um, each with probability of occurrence of, let's say, p sub r, p sub l, p sub plus, right? Um, and, and these are not um, necessarily eigenstates of the computational basis, right? But one thing to keep in mind is that, like we, we specify here above for this general state psi, well, we can express any state as a superposition of eigenstates in some basis, right? So, so just rewriting that expression here for, for any psi sub i, right, for any psi sub i, we have that this can be expressed as the sum from u equal to zero to n of an alpha sub u. And now I'm gonna put the superscript i to the note that this is for the state psi sub i, right, times phi sub u. So, you know, in the case of, let's say, for example, the the right state, right? The right state is one over root two, zero plus i over root two, uh, one. So in, in that particular case, phi sub zero will be zero, right? Phi sub one will be one. And then our alpha superscript r for, for the right state zero will be one over root two and our alpha sub one of the state r will be i over root two, right? So, so this is just to show an example of, of what would be the corresponding eigenstates and, and uh, probability amplitudes associated with, with uh, the state r, right? So now what we can do is take this expression here and replace it in here and then, you know, take the bra version of it and replace it here. So, so if we do that, let's let's move down here and write um, again. Rho is the sum from one, i equal to one through m of p sub i. And now to make things easier, let's just copy and paste this right here. And then this this again is this is psi sub i, right? And then we got we have to multiply this by the bra version of this, right? What what would that be? Well, it would be a similar sum for a different index. Let's call it v from zero to n. And we have to use a different index because we're going to be multiplying each of the terms from the 
cat and the bra. And then times, well, the probability amplitude alpha sub v of the state i times the vra of phi sub v. Now, what we need to do here with the coefficients is take the complex conjugate of that, right? Because we're, we're expressing the bra of phi sub i, okay? So now one thing here is that this p sub i's uh, alpha sub u's and alpha sub v's are just numbers. So we can rearrange this expression in the following way. We can do rho is equal to, and I'm just gonna move this sums a little bit. So from u equal to zero to n, and then the sum from v equal to zero to n of the sum of i one to m p sub i alpha sub u of the state i, alpha sub v of the state i complex conjugate, and then the outer product of phi sub u and phi sub v. And now this right here, these are just numbers, right? So I can call this rho sub u v. So what we have here is a sum through coefficients v and u of this outer product of phi sub u and phi sub v, right? But, but what is that? So let's look at an example, right? Let's say that this, um, you know, phi sub u's uh, are for a two qubit system. So that's gonna be for u going from th zero to three. And, and this corresponds to the states zero, 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 one, one zero one one right so so this sum is just basically going to be the sum through all possible combinations of this four so you know it's going to be uh, a sum of zero 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 and then zero 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 one oops and then all the way to the outer product of one 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 but what are these these are just uh, matrices, right, where only one element is equal to one and all elements are equal to zero. So this one is just a matrix where the first element is one and the rest are zeros, right? Uh, the next one is just the second element is one and the rest are zeros. And then the last one is just everything is zeros except the last element is, is one, right? So what we're doing here is just we're going through all the different sums of this matrices and multiplying them by this uh, coefficient rho sub u v, right? So, I mean, all that's gonna give us is, you know, matrix of the form rho zero zero, rho zero one, all the way to rho zero n, rho one zero, rho one one, rho one n, and then, you know, all the way to rho n n, where each of these elements, rho u v, is given by this expression right here. So that was a lot of math, but let's try to make sense of this equation by maybe first looking at what the diagonal elements of the density matrix uh, for a mixed state will look like, right? So, so diagonal elements will be the ones for which, um, you know, u is equal to v equal to some value k, right? So in that case, our density matrix will be rho sub kk equal to the sum from i equal one to m of the probabilities p sub i. And now we have alpha sub k of the state i times alpha sub k of the state i complex conjugate, right? But these are nothing else than, other than uh, alpha sub k of the state i norm squared. So what this expression is telling us is that for the diagonal elements, rho k, k, what we have is still the probability of finding the eigenstate k, but now weighted by the classical probability of that um, eigenstate showing up in our mixture, right? And, you know, if this is not clear, maybe let's take a look at a simple example. So let's say that, you know, we have a state A of the form uh, root of one over three 
0, 0 plus root 2 over 3, 1, 1, and a state B of the form 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 0, 1, plus 1 over root 2, 1, 1. And we have a mixed state uh, where uh, we have our state A and B with some probability of occurrence, let's say uh, 9 over 10 and 1 over 10, right? So if we write our expression for the density matrix, well, we have 9 over 10 of the outer product of A plus 1 over 10, the outer product of B. And if we replace our expressions for A and B, we actually get a density matrix of the form 9 over 10 of 1 over 3 outer product of state 0, 0 plus root 2 over 3 outer product of 0, 0 with 1, 1 plus root 2 over 3 of 1, 1, 0, 0 plus 2 over 3, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then for B we get 1 over 10 of 1 half, 0, 1, 0, 1, plus 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 1, plus 1 half, 1, 1, 0, 1, plus 1 half, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so what are our diagonal elements here? Well, the, the diagonal elements are the coefficients row 0, 0, and row 1, 1. And those are the terms that are multiplying the outer products 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 1. So for the case of 0, 0, we have 9 over 10 times 1 over 3. But what are these? Well, this right here is the probability of finding the state 0, 0 given the state A, right? And this right here, well, is the probability of state A occurring. So here we have it, our term rho 0, 0 is no other than the probability of finding the eigenstate 0, 0 weighted by the probability of finding state A in our mixture. Right, and, and rho 1, 1 is going to be 9 over 10 times 2 over 3, that's this term right here, plus 1 over 10 times 1 half, which is this term right here. And this is the probability of finding state A times the probability of measuring state 1, 1 given state A. Right, and here is the probability of finding state B in our mixture times the probability of measuring state 1, 1 given state B. So that's what uh, this, this terms correspond to. So that, that's what this expression is trying to tell us. Now for the off-diagonal terms, uh, we'll do that in the next video following on a, an intuitive approach to see what these terms correspond to.